Hello everybody and welcome to Weekly Manga Recap. It's April the 26th, 2016, the last week of Comedy Month here on Weekly Manga Recap. It's going to be the last time that we do random wacky voices for a voted upon chapter by you, the fans. But uh, that's not until much later. We've got many other things to talk about before that. Chris, how you doing? I'm doing good, Nick. I am. Uh, I-, I want to be known. I- from henceforward, my commitment to this show, I believe, should never be in question, Nick. Because we are doing this podcast on Tuesday this week. And... I am here recording a podcast instead of voting in the Pennsylvania primary. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Chris. There was no time. There was no time for me to do it after work and still get back here for the podcast. So I'm like, you know what? Weekly manga recap. My manga podcast is more important than this election. It's, it's kind of like you're going to watch the news the next day. Well, I don't even know if you ever watch the news. You're going to like hear a word on the street tomorrow it's like oh can you believe that you know i thought that you know bernie might have a chance hillary might win but no cthulhu won the democratic nomination <laughs> well that's the thing uh, it's also the- he just took over every other states for some reason <laughs> i guess it was because not enough people turned out for the other candidates <laughs> now that's the thing is the primary and uh i'm registered republican because i registered republican like eight years ago and just never changed it because i just keep forgetting that's a thing Mm-hmm. So I only thing I could have done is is voted against Trump. I don't like anyone in that side of it. So it would have really see, been let's like see, let's see. Do we want the lesser demon who's running against him, or do we want Blandy McBland Bland? Yeah, I'm like, why don't I just uh, geez, I'll just do a manga podcast. I'll 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 turn out when the actual election shows up. Unless you know, there's another podcast to record. <laughs> You should have tried to, like, do, like, a write-in for one of those, you know, protest candidates. Like, uh, the guy who, like, is, declares himself, or, like, the guy who declares himself, like, the king of rats and wears a boot on his head or something like that. Or that one guy who's, like, the rent is too damn high. Oh, I could have. Um, maybe, maybe next time. Uh, I find it amusing if, like, the actual election comes around, I'm like, I'm definitely gonna vote in this. Actually, wait, no, they're doing the pre-screenings for Doctor Strange on Tuesday, so I'll just, I'm sure it won't be that bad. Um, I, I Cthulhu wanted, wins White House. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's kind of, I thought just looking upon him brought you pure, unstoppable, and so, I'm like, I'm like it's well, just, well, even mentioning his name brings him closer to power, you know? <laughs> sure. I, uh, I've been watching documentaries on Netflix recently. Okay. And there's one that I, I watched uh, called The Berkeley Marathons. It's about this marathon in uh, Tennessee, in like the mountains, that is just like one of the weirdest, craziest marathons. Some say the hardest marathon in the world, you know, kind of an arguable thing. But it's a, the owner says a hundred mile marathon, uh, but everyone who runs it says it's like 130. You can't like enroll into it naturally. You have to like ask the right questions to the right people to get in. When you get in, they send you a letter of condolence instead of a congratulations. (laughs) Um, You can't, there's no course markers. You have to get a map and then copy the trail off of his master map. And it's it's just a plethora of all these absurd things. You you had to finish each course within 12 hours. You have 60 hours to finish the whole thing. Only three of the loops is considered a fun run. It's crazy. So I was looking up information about it. I typed it into uh, to Reddit just to see like more people. Like maybe there's more information about this thing. And I found some. But I got a, a hit from a weird subreddit that I couldn't quite understand. It was uh, Who Would Win? Which is a subreddit that's essentially like Who Would Win? Doctor Strange or Batman? Or, you know, just odd things like that. And the, the result that came out is like, Hey, I heard about this Berkeley Marathon. Would your favorite character be able to beat the Berkeley Marathon? I'm like, that's kind of an interesting prospect. Like, Captain well, America would totally be able to beat the Berkeley Yeah, like, I'm like, some characters would definitely be, like, interesting. I'm like, you know, James Bond's very skilled. He's very apt. I think he could beat it. I mean, it's a lot of endurance. You know, who knows? Maybe it's not exactly as well as... I wasn't sure. No, nobody who went into it is thinking that. They're like, well, Superman could just fly over the course eight times. Of course he's able to do it. I'm like, what the fuck is the point of this? That he's not doing the Berkeley run. <laughs> like, what are you gauging? If you're fucking like, oh, yeah, of course the Flash should be able to finish. Of course the fucking Flash is going to be able to do it. He, he runs. It's the one thing he does. <laughs> Besides make garbage television. 
you would have to do something like uh like could spider-man beat the berkeley run would be fair because at least he can't fly yeah it, it, uh, was, it was could little... could i could iron man beat it if his suit could not fly or something like that i feel like you'd even need to take it down more from that like you need to just like if you just build more grounded characters running it, right, right. it's an interesting proposition. But the fact that it's it's just like a plethora of people being like, could you finish the Berkeley Marathon? Like, what? what is, could, could, could the Hulk finish it? Like, well, he just ripped the he horse just, out. <laughs> he would just smash through whatever obstacles were in the way. I'm like, I can't do this. Was a fair point would be, would Hawkeye be able to beat the Berkeley run? Yeah, like, yeah that, that's a great example. Good guy in great shape, but he doesn't have any superhuman abilities. Yeah, he's resourceful, but not necessarily superhuman in a lot of his fitness things and all those those aspects. So absolutely, that would make perfect sense. Instead, it's, hold on, I, I'm going to pull it up here. All right, awesome. Uh, would Goku be able to beat the Berkeley run? <laughs> Aqua. Well, you just it's a transmission to the other side. <laughs> Aqua from Kingdom Hearts, who uses her keyblade to fly. I'm like, this is how is this an option? Why did you put this in here? I'm like, if your if your thought is, well, I'll just have my dude fly or teleport to the end. I'm like, I don't I don't get this subreddit. You confuse the shit out of me. There's a couple of suggestions in the chat that are actually like making sense. Like, would Nami be able to make it? Like, I don't really think so because. Oh yeah, God, she's no. just, no, she's she, that's not her kind of strength. You know, she's a thief, she's clever, and she has her climb attack, sure. But that's not going to really help you run a marathon too well. Unless you just conjures a cloud for her to fly. Out. Yeah, I'm like, unless she conjures an illusion to make everyone think she's run, but she's actually already finished it. She just, per, she just pretends to run a lap around the gate over and over again. Like, I fucking hate you. She just, like, flashes one of the judges to, to convince him to... to oh, I don't think it would work on this dude. This dude's... Uh, the dude He's like, this. no, it's too much of a sadist. <laughs> he is. He's like, he... Because the way to prove... Because there's no people out on the course. Like, once you leave the starting gate, it's you and the wilderness and other runners. And his way of making sure you run the course is he leaves books out there that you have to tear a page out according to your racing number. But all the jokes are there... All the books are there to make fun of you. Like... Body in the Woods, The Fool, The Biggest Idiot. Like, all books that are just like, why are you doing this? It's like, forget the Hulk being able to finish this course. Would Hulk Hogan be able to finish this course? Absolutely not. He's got no gas Good whatsoever. Boy. I was like, Hulk Hogan in his prime couldn't do a lap, I don't think. <laughs> he would just be like, how do I go over this, brother? <laughs> We're going to no-sell the endurance course, brother. <laughs> yeah, he's like, can you guys just uh, have the course fall to me? <laughs> can I finger poke the course? Maybe we could have Beefer try and run the course, and he collapses immediately, dude, but then I do my leg drop, and I rip off my shirt, brother. I pick him up, and then you, you, you make sure it's right next to the finish line, brother, and then I carry him across the finish line. They're like, that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how it works. I'll just come in at the last leg of the course, brother. All right, Mr. Hogan, fine. <laughs> word, 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 stop saying the N-word, Mr. Hogan. I know this is Tennessee, but please don't. <laughs> All right, we're, we're done with that, I think. It's time for the recap portion of Weekly Monger Recap. And uh, we are going to be starting things off, as we typically do, with Black Clover. Page 59, The Underwater Temple. It's everyone's favorite ocarina of time level, Chris. Well, both of ours. Yeah, but I was like, <laughs> if you're a podcast for Weekly Manga Recap, it's your favorite ocarina of time dungeon. Look, that temple has Dark Link in it. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> it's so sweet. You get the long yeah. shot in it. Or is it just so, the hook shot in that game? I think it's just the hook shot. No, it's the long shot. You use The hook shot is the first one you get when you become an adult, and then you earn yeah. the long shot uh, right. while going through the temple. And that allows you to progress across you know longer gaps and stuff. You need it in order to reach the final boss. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Anyway, uh, so uh, last time on Black Clover, Noel managed to master Sea Dragon's Lair. And I think it turned, like, she changed the name in order to announce the perfected form. But uh, the point is, she can safely carry everyone through the choppy waters to the underwater temple. Um, and uh, we open up with, uh, you know, a bunch of the Black Bulls being super impressed, and Yami kind of patting Noel on the head, and you know, be like, oh, good job, Noel. And I was like, oh, of course today. But meanwhile, she's in her, in her thoughts going, he complimented me! 
Which, it's the extended me that really gets me. Just like, oh, I get it. You hide your inner thoughts from people. I think, Nick, I think I know of a way we can make Noelle a lot more of an enjoyable character for us all. How's we that? We need her to give her a silly voice. And I'm thinking, what if we gave her, like, the voice of the singer from Creed? Like, are you complimenting me? <laughs> <laughs> like, if you read it like that, I think you're going to enjoy it a lot more. Would she have, like, a different singer's voice when she's just talking normally? Mm-hmm. Like, one that's, like, really... Yeah. Like a singer that's really um, sounds very sure of themselves and uh, arrogant at times. I don't know. For the for when she's talking normally, she talks mm-hmm. like that. Um, who would that be? Like a like a singer with a lot of confidence, like a Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's just like I'm no, taking I mean, the cards aside. I, I mean, like, you know, Kanye West levels of confidence. Oh, she's like, yo, I'm turning the cards aside. Feels as if the man's cooperating with me. Would you be for me quiet? I can't concentrate. You got it completely backwards there, so. Uh, well, she went backwards there. It works. Yeah. She's like, oh, no, I, I mixed up my, my inner Kanye with my inner whatever the fuck the Creed singer's <laughs> <laughs> name is. <laughs> um... There's a, there's a couple of weird bits cause as they're you know traveling through the sea and so on and so forth because the Black Bulls, in, in, as usual, are just being fucking weirdos. Uh, so, you know, Magnus Slash is there and he's like, just gonna be, you know, be like, I'm, I've got the same facial expression for every emotion I try to convey. And Aston is like, my eyes are shiny. And he's like, you know, cheering Noel on. And then there's Charmy next to him just going, ah! and that's it. That's all she's saying. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, there is actually some really good art in this chapter. I feel uh, when they yeah. get into like uh, they, they, when there's just this almost two page spread that shows them, you know, floating uh, you know, on the ocean floor, and you like you know, see a shark in the background. There's all sorts of different uh, you know kind of coral uh, surrounding the ocean floor. Um, I think this is why I like underwater levels the most in like video games that have that kind of aesthetic because i always feel like underwater levels have the coolest looking visuals like there's just something like, unique about it and cool it's like, like you're going to another freaking world yeah seriously. it's the closest thing to like an alien world in comparison to what we have so it, it definitely is a very cool visual to get here of like all these fantastic like this is the first time i've really felt since, like, the start of the series when there was, like, a giant demon skeleton where I was like, oh, right, this is, like, a magical world, not just magical right, right, people right. in it. Like, there's, like, a unicorn shark and a fucking, like, tortoise with, like, a tree on its back. It's like, unicorn, a unicorn, unicorn shark! Unicorn shark! Unicorn shark! Unicorn shark for Straw Hat. <laughs> <laughs> I want fucking unicorn sharks in every goddamn series we read, goddammit. Unicorns and sharks, you can't go wrong. Well, you almost uh, get one with the uh, businessman Orca in My Hero Academia. Oh, that's a good he's point. He's so close. But he's dead. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. So um, it's like, I, have, I read Black Clover this week, but not My Hero. Why? <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> that you made that decision. Um, the part of this chapter that I dislike the most is the Black Bulls being the Black Bulls. Because... We've introduced all these characters, and some of them we've gotten to know really well. Like, Gaush is like, he can be, you know, his typical, this is my character archetype thing, but it's like, but I know more about him. But Charmy is there, and she's like, oh, look at all those fish. I want to eat them, because my character eats things. Like, that's, we only know is like, she thinks you know's hot, and she wants to eat everything. That's all we know about her. And of course, so of course, by the way, Yudo is on the character page for this chapter too. He's oh, always God, going are... to be. It is def. It, at this point now, I can, I'm assured it's like an inside joke amongst the people at Jump as well that they're just like, Yudo's on it every week. Oh good. Um, and Finral is like, look at those pretty shells. What if I were to take some to girls? Do you think that they would be all up on me after that? It's like, we get it. You 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 only care about girls, and you're a coward. That's your character. Which is kind of weird because I didn't 
totally get that impression from him when his first introduction came out, like, in the Mixer chapter. Like, he was definitely interested in the girls, but it felt, I guess, like, a little bit more well-rounded. Like, ever he since then, like, it's... He seemed like he was girl crazy. Yeah. You know, he seemed like... He's like a... I, he seemed like a guy who wanted a relationship. As or a dude who just wants to get... So like, look, he's a guy. I get it. He wants to get his, you know, every once in a while. You know, some magical strange is never, you know... It's, it's, it's fine. Some people... Some people go for it. It's just everything since then has been a little bit, like... I could pick up those girls. At least he's not a lecturer, at least. Like, he hasn't right. seemed... He, he's a, he's a he's a very Brock kind of girl crazy. Mm -hmm. Which, um, hey, it's going to be funny at times. It'd be nice to see a little bit more diversity out of him, but since there's so many Black Bulls in the series at this moment, it kind of makes sense that everyone's kind of... Like, to give everyone a chance to be showcased, they kind of had to boil everyone down to those, like, one or two intrinsic things that make them the character. Right. I'm sure that we'll get more you know character focused moments throughout the series as we go on mm -hmm. um so they come across a magical uh whirlpool that's cutting them off and noelle says that she can't get through it because it's magic so she doesn't have control of it so yami's like okay well that's it swing your magic sword thing at it and then it'll get out of the way and as goes i realized something crazy while we were at the beach earlier i can't swim You'd think that he would have known that, like, for that point. <laughs> well, no, I mean, remember, he lived, he's a peasant, so he's, like, lived out in the middle of fucking nowhere in that desert. They don't, they never had pools, Nick. Well, yeah, but... He's like, I can swim in a bathtub, was... I can swim everywhere. Should, it's just when I was like, well, ass is an idiot, isn't he, things. Um, I, I do like how... <laughs> Noel was just watching him drown. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of weird, and she just says, like, the ellipses, like, the the blank face stare. She's like, this is okay. I'm like, aren't you in love with this guy? Well, she, he, he didn't notice her wearing the new bikini, Chris. Therefore, he has to die. Or is it because it's a very masculine, embarrassing thing that's happened, he's drowning, that she's like, ugh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, very, I'm not very hot for Please you right die. now. Please die. Kind of embarrassed that I've ever been interested in you. Uh, so Yami is like, "Well, you're not gonna actually need to swim." Just grabs him by the back and just throws him through the uh, sea dragon's lair. Uh, it looks like he actually like magically throws him because his arm is glowing as he does this. Um, so he kind of shoots him really, really hard and just tosses him straight into the whirlpool and has to, you know, summons his sword and, like, a missile cuts through it. Uh, and fortunately for him, uh, he randomly just, like, comes out into an area where there's air. Uh, as they basically have reached Atlantis. This, you know, underwater, uh, city that has air at the bottom mm -hmm. of the ocean. Uh, so they're there, and, uh, more, more great art. Uh, I really like the, uh, cool landscape that they've got it's uh, it's basically made to look like the you know bottom of a giant cave which makes sense because you know water is dripping down into it um stalagmites everywhere uh so um they come across like the nat like natives very surely although there is a quick moment where like i don't really get it he yami goes to Charming and goes, make us coffee. And that's, like, it. There's just, like, one little tiny panel where he's just, like, make us coffee. I'm trying to read what that thing even says. The it's Noble Realm's late, latest... Latest dessert craze. Is he saying... He's bribing... Oh, he's, not... he's bribing... He's bribing her with dessert to make them coffee. Uh, it says coffin. Oh, cotton. cotton. Make us cotton. Okay. All right, I get that. So she makes a cotton platform. Okay. But he apparently has to give her food. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. I thought it was coffee, too. It's really tiny. But... It's very small text. It's hard to see. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, they come across, you know, dwellings, and they come across the natives, basically. Uh, and uh, like, oh, outside people, magic night. This is so cool. Oh, it's been so long since we've had visitors. Yay. And Yummy is... Like got no time for buzzer. He's just like, get the get us the boss of the temple right now. 
and they're like, okay. They're like, but you haven't even gotten the hook shot yet. <laughs> you're like, just take me there. No, 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 you gotta fight Dark Link. It's weird, because this doesn't go anywhere. Like, Dark Link doesn't show up again. He's just in this moment, but it's a cool fight. Uh, and again, Charmy is just like, I want to eat that thing. I want to eat that thing. I want to eat that crap thing. This vicious creature. <laughs> they come across this very large tower, the huge set of doors at the front, and all the people are like, Say hi to the high priest from us! Bye! You know, assuming that you all come back. It's kind of weird when you think about it. Like, we get introduced to all these people in, like, the two pages before. And then they're like, say hi to the high priest for us. Like, you live here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, do you, have you not seen him in years? What's going on? Well, we don't go in there. There's a fucking monster in there. Yeah, that's scary. That's scary. Uh, this giant creature with, uh, you know, needle teeth. Uh, attacks them. It looks very much like a you know a creature that dwells in the depths of the ocean, like sightless eyes. Like, yeah, like an anglerfish or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, a bunch of the black bulls just immediately kill it. Uh, Gauche and Magna and uh, Luck all shoot their various attacks at it and blow it to fucking kingdom come. It's and then they're all like they establish yeah. their strong trio essentially. And as soon as they they dealt with it, then then they go, "What's that thing?" Uh, but it turns out that the creature... I can't imagine that Gauche, Magnuswing, and Luck all speak with the same cadence, though. No, no, they So didn't. it clearly had to be, like, Magnuswing and Luck finishing first, and, like, Gauche still be like, what's that creepy thing? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Then. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna quickly sum up my magic. <laughs> my little sister's so hot now. That's what. It, that's the thing. I like little, little sisters. I get older, they stay the same age. All right, oh, all right, all right. Except they don't. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out that the creature was summoned by the priest, the high priest, who is this bearded guy, like very like old Asian wizard kind of looking guy because he's got long eyebrows and long uh, narrow beard. When they adapt uh, us into a movie, he's going to be played by Tilda Swinton. Okay. Boosh, topical. Uh, and uh, so, let's see here. He basically dismisses the creature that he summoned, and, which makes Charmy very upset because first he transformed it into basically giant flank steaks for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and yeah. He uh, says, oh, so you must have come here for the magic stone. Well, then, if you want it, play a little game with me. And that's it. Uh, that was my clover. There were some parts of it that I did like, but it was ultimately just like, and now they're progressing to the actual challenge. So Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where they go, and it, there's some good bits in it. It's a weird note to end the chapter on a little bit. Um, like, not like a bad one it's just a bit strange like i kept thinking there'd be another panel after this or like a full body shot of this guy or something like that but it's still good like i actually probably would have ended it right after like gaush and then did their attack because that's kind of like a cool way to end it but it makes sense to end it here kind of tease this dude and what he's going to do so what a mm -hmm. chapter overall they also tried to make a big deal out of how powerful the guy is because he summons such a huge creature with his magic mm -hmm. so but, you know, this could be interesting. I'll see. All right, let's move on to Bleach. I'm ready for this, Nick. I'm ready. 671, The Perfect Crimson 2. Last time, Zoraki was too powerful for his own body to contain. So, his arm ripped off. Uh, and hits the guy at the last petal of his dagger in Hiyomaru, uh, faded, but instead of reaching a time load for his Bankai, instead it was reaching a time load for his Bankai to achieve its true form. <laughs> to which Hitsugaya explains, my power isn't developed enough yet to have full command of Hyorimaru. I don't know if that's why, but when Daigur and Hyorimaru is complete, I become a little older. Which is super lame. 
<laughs> like, just, like, it's clearly like there's no thought put into it. It's just like, I get older because I do. It's like, really? Right. I get older because Kishia Kubo wanted to draw me older. Like, the impression that I'm getting is that he is theorizing, like, my form is still too young to fully be able to unleash the full power of my sword. So when it reaches a certain point, it just forces my body to the level of maturity and age required to be able to handle it. Which means I'm able to handle it with no big problem. Like on like, Lisa's uh, example in the chat, he crosses the boundary between not legal to probably legal. <laughs> I don't know, does that make it creepier? Because it's like, well, he is still mentally the same guy, right? So it's like you're it's like you're just fucking a 14-year-old who has the body of a 20-year-old. I don't think they have Megan's Law in the uh, Soul Society, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, and someone actually tweeted this at me. He's like, did you notice that like there are so many characters in Bleach who don't like the form that their full power takes? Which is like, yeah, that is kind of becoming a recurring thing that's kind of lame. Because his guy is like, I don't really like this form all that much. It's like, like Soifun didn't like the form all that much. Yeah, yeah Kakion didn't like it, or Sunshui. Sunshui didn't like it very much. I feel like he said something to that extent. Yeah, um, it's like, I was like, I don't like the form my power takes. It's like, didn't, uh, what's his name even say it to? Um, Urahara? I feel like we've heard this phrase it's very happened, recently. It's happened more than twice. I also, know. what's his name didn't like it? Uh, Asuka Naklavar didn't like the full release of his power very much. Right. It's gaudy. Right. Yeah. It's, I get it. Like, you're you're doing a thing where it's like, the form of power takes doesn't suit the personality of the person wielding it. How many times do you need to do that? Little... Isn't that weird, though? Because I thought the whole thing with Bankai and Shikai was that they were supposed to be representative of the person. It's, you know, it's representative of their power. I thought, like, uh, did they mention that, what's her name, um, Matsumoto's Bankai was kind of, like, lazy like she was? Or Shikai? Well, they're, yeah, their swords have their own personalities. They don't necessarily have the same one as the one who wields them. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, uh... Like, when Shinsui explained, you know, his two swords have different personalities, you know. Uh, one is very playful. But that's because one was actually, what's her names? It was actually Nanos, who yeah. is not a very playful person, so. <laughs> um, anyhow. So it's a guy has taken his, uh, jailbait form, let's call it. Um, and Gerard is just like, huh. I thought you'd already released your Bankai. Why'd you alter yourself even more? Oh, well, don't care. <laughs> uh, and they fight and fight some more. Uh, and his guy reveals that in this form, he is so super powerful that uh, when he attacks Hofnung, a Gerard's sword, if he freezes it to absolute zero, all of its uh, properties cease to function. Like, he just goes, if it's frozen, all matter ceases to function. And Gerard's like, bitch, it's a magic sword! It should still be hurting you! <laughs> it's like, but absolute zero causes everything to stop functioning. But, but, fuck your science! <laughs> uh, so, hits the guy, rather than immediately striking the finishing blow, decides to land on a tower and pose with his sword like yeah. this in order to go, it's like, all of your hope has stopped functioning. He's and Gerard's fine. like, George's like, oh well, giant Quincy boat. <laughs> He's uh, busy posing for like a Bashonin calendar. He's like, See, this is why I don't like this form. You know, regular me would never have, have posed for GQ like this. <laughs> <laughs> so Gerard's like, oh well, I'll just use a giant fucking arrow to shoot you. And this guy is like, well, you decided to do that a little bit too late. And he just freezes him. He freezes him and he freezes the bow too. And uh, he just starts narrating, and it's just like, you see, this technique freezes the four elements, earth, water, fire, and wind, in the space you've occupied within four steps after releasing Jaguar and Hyori Maru. If you had shot the Quincy Arrow within three steps, you may have been able to hit me. Pose. Oh shit, he can still move! <laughs> oh god! 
He just breaks out of the ice and just snatches him and just grabs him in his hand and starts fucking crushing him. Uh, which is probably, like, the only time he's used to size in any way that's, like, makes any sense. Um, but then suddenly he falls over because, um, I'm not sure exactly how Siraki is actually gripping onto him with one hand, but he's doing it. It's kind of like an eh. Um, and then he freezes again because he's guy is like, but do you think that you could really get away with touching me in this state? And Gerard's like, I thought you were 21! <laughs> Stop teasing me! My heart can only take so much. Uh, so he's still shaking off the freezing, freeze, frozen effect, but uh, Byakuya has unleashed his um, Simon Sakura Kageyoshi in its Senkei form, that form that summons the like arena of swords. Uh, I don't think he's actually... I'm not sure if he's ever actually used this since way back when he fought Ichigo. Uh, it seems like he's always just stuck to just, you know, giant swarm of petals and stuff. But way back then, he summoned this same technique. And this time he's just like, and now I will use my ultimate technique, Ika Senjinka, which caused all the swords to point inward and attack him at once. Which seems like it would have been a very useful way to defeat Ichigo. Oh well. What can you do? It's, you know... Do you think this is the end of Gerard, Nick? I kind of doubt it, considering that his power is every time I'm hurt, I just get back up stronger. That's my thought, is I'm like, they haven't... They haven't found yet the ability that perfectly counters him. Like, they couldn't stop the god until they had the god-slaying sword. So I feel like... They couldn't stop the guy who was able to build up immunity and everything until someone just, you know, beat him in a period of time before he Clocked could gain immunity to him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and they couldn't defeat the thing that took over all that he touched until when he tried to take over something that poisoned him. So, um, I kind of highly doubt this is going to be the finishing blow. I'm not really sure exactly how they're going to end up beating Gerard. Chad. Uh, oh, he just like he just hits a statue so hard that it just like flies across, and then bops him in the head and he knocks him out. Like, all right, Gerard. Let me just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sell you on next chapter, Nick. Gerard breaks out of his ice, fucking knocks out all three of these guys here. They're like, we can't beat this guy. His power is that he is the miracle. He overcomes all odds. And then a lone challenger comes, his, his cape draping and flapping in the distance. It's Chad. And he's like, I know I'm not normally good know, at these I got things. This cape. <laughs> yeah, I got in the cape somehow. And then he goes to punch him. And, like, he hits him. And all of a sudden, Gerard just sees flashbacks of all the times Chad's gotten the living shit kicked out of him. And the miracle power sees that he is the true underdog <laughs> and just gives it to him. It's the only way to defeat Gerard is to have someone who would have no chance of defeating him fight him. The miracle can't work that way, Nick. Oh, God. And then Chad promptly gets crushed by Gerard's falling corpse and loses the fight in time. Oh, God. Well, I'm sure we'll find out sooner or later. Uh, let's move on to Fairy Tale. Yes, fairy tale chapter four hundred eighty-three, seven stars with a color page of shockingly Urza wearing very little clothing. Um, last it's time, more dignified, it's more dignified than she's looked in the past, though. Let's face it. Yeah, I, I guess there's a kind of a coolness aesthetic to it. I, I don't know. Um, she was defeated last week, though, or knocked out. She actually won her fight by just being. Sc- super scary to everybody else and all the rest of the illusions. She's so up. scary! The way that she's mostly naked and looking at us mean. I know she's literally unable to hurt us, but... Eh. Um, so Gerard... Or not I Gerard. can't beat you, fairy tale. Even though you're all worn down and I'm at full strength, I can see you're determined, so I surrender. Yeah. Oh, God damn it, I hate that scene so much. Uh, Jalal uh, is angry now because Urza is so hard so he's going to take the fight and the sky above them opens up into just like the cosmos like it just looks like a nighttime like you're just in outer space above them and everyone's very confused like what's happening and we 
cut around to all the different battles of people fighting their past that are going on. And Marudi, I guess, was that girl's name. Who I forget. is this? <laughs> I remember she, I vaguely remember she was from that island arc with Fairy Tail that ended with Aquilogia showing up for the first time. She had the ability to, like, sensory link you, so if she got hurt, you did. But at the end, they found, like, she was a friend. Member of Grimoire Hearts. A member of Grimoire Heart and one of the seven kin of Purgatory. Um, I mean, I, she bet she joined with uh, uh, J- Jalel's group after that arc ended, essentially. She's a very minor character. It's it's understandable to forget who she is. Because if she hadn't shown her fucking magic power here, I'd have been like, I forget what she does. Something with the uh, dust, maybe? I don't know. It also looks very different than when she first showed up. Because she had, like, these weird wing things in her first appearance. Yeah. So, she's uh, gonna unite her magic with, uh, with Luvia and, uh, uh, Grey and Leon have a conversation about how, you know, Leon's so jealous of Grey because he's like, you're so strong and you've kept on moving and you've, you've gone, you've taken the road far beyond Ur. And Grey's like, I never took that road. I, you know, didn't take any detours. I followed the tough road and... Now you're going to follow with me, so get walking. And There's basically a barrage of characters teaming up with one another or feeling like they're going to like team up Unity, except for Luxus, who's just like, Fuck you, old man! And it then leaves... <laughs> it just a... starts beating the shit out. Yeah, because it, it all culminates in like a two-page spread split between these four fights of our heroes beating these illusions. And for all of them, it's because someone, basically two characters team up and unite their strengths together. Except for Loxus. He has no emotional reason for doing this. He's just like, fuck you! Kaboom! (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, uh, uh, because Carlo, you know, has this super lame, like, I'll help, I'll move you since you can't move your legs, Wendy, because the two of us will always be together forever! And she's like crying while she does it. And it's like, but was there a reason for you to have to have like some big crying while flying through the air thing? Like, no one ever said that you're going to be taken away from Wendy. Is it because of the near death experience? Is that what's, what the connection's supposed to be? Well, I guess it's because she's, she's afraid Wendy could die if she doesn't. It's just a uh, rather lame way to do it. it, it look, it's well, all this stuff is ha- stuff. well, and all this stuff is happening way too quickly, you know. Because it's like, fucking Grey and Leon taking on an illusion of their teacher slash foster mother. And it's just happening at the same time as Meredy and Juvia are teaming up. Yeah. I, look, ex- with the exception of Grey and Leon fighting Ur, all the rest of these fights are ungodly forgettable. I forgot who most of these people were fighting. I don't remember the name of the fucking tentacle demon. I, I barely remember the god-slaying dude from that island and uh, the necromancer from the Avatar arc, or not Avatar, Tartarus arc? Who, who gives a fuck? Hades I is like a small character too in the grand scheme of things. I mean, he at least has a connection to him beyond just, we fought one time. So, there's that. But it is like they all share the same amount of space, like panel space in this one scene. But you're like, clearly one of these fights would have a lot more emotional impact than the rest of these by far. And there's a lot you could have accomplished with this premise. You know, uh, having Laxus fight uh, this guy, you know, it would be a means for him to like show, you know, just how much he has matured. And how much closer he is to the guild now than when, you know, he had his big arc where he tried to murder them all basically um but he never planned to because he yeah, loved them too much hard. It's his heart he never wanted to hurt them um you know Gray and Leon showing the fact that together they can overtake their old master uh stuff like that you, you can accomplish a lot with those with at least those two fights uh and instead it's just like we gotta do a montage so that then Jalal can just be like and now fuck you yeah because essentially that's what happens. Like, all four of them win, and then Jalal has his big, like, may the stars punish you. But uh, the guy summons Simon right before the end. Like, ah, and Kaguya cuts him down. And it's kind of weird, too, because she's like, this is not my big brother. But you can clearly see Simon smiling that she killed him again. 
that she's like moved that she stopped him from attacking and I guess moved on and then Joel just crushes him with like a giant laser beam barrage from space and uh that's it like he's the historian dude is defeated now he falls into the ocean defeated um and Urza says oh what a beautiful scarlet sky I'm like what Oh yes, the sky is so beautiful when it is blood red. I'm like, is it sunrise? I didn't, I didn't think we were like in the middle of night though. Unless maybe it's sunset. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Regardless, we then cut away because this is a really long chapter of fairy tale, surprisingly, and we're back at the counts or the uh, guild, and Natsu's saying, "Well, I'll go and take the dude in the east. I'll take down August." And Lucy's like, "I'll go with them." And their logic is, look, these are the strongest guy. We gotta go take him down. And Brandis shows up, and she's like, actually, he's one of the strongest. She's saying, uh, you know, people assume because his title is the strongest mage out of the twelve, they just think that's the way it ends. But actually, he's the strongest man in the Spriggan Twelve, and the strongest woman is Irene Belsarian. The who looks Scarlet like Scarlet Scourge. She looks like a fucking League of Legends character. She does. It. I can't help but feel like she's trying a little too hard. Like I look she, at this, I'm like, there's there's too much going. Look on at here. the fucking hair. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that hair is ridiculous. I get it. You're gonna fight Urza. <laughs> it literally seems like it really seems like she couldn't decide what he said to go with, because I don't know, a lot of it looks like you know, oh, the dominatrix style sexy mage. Mm -hmm. But then there's the giant winter cloak. Also, yeah. her gloves have claws, which doesn't seem to match with the entire rest of it, because part of it, because, like, the way that her hair is done and stuff, it looks like she's, you know, mighty battle mage. But I've got sexy clawed gloves. It's like, really can't seem to decide what the hell she's going with. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot going on. I'm, I'm, I feel like she was a little over-designed there. Um, but the thing that's kind of odd about this, I mean, beyond the fact that they're like, oh, yeah, she's super awesome. Uh, strongest female is that they're now the, the chapter title for next week is the savage six implying that i guess there's more to this brigand 12 than what we've been led to believe because i'm trying to like look through it we know there's august and we now know there's this girl right here um there's uh da, 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 da. i'm trying to like go through and read them all there's still bradman he's still out there I guess right. Brandish is still undefeated, so I guess she would count in that Savage six. Even though she's basically betrayed them anyhow. Yeah. Uh, someone's saying, I'm reading here, uh, Invul, a polite, snow-haired young man who embodies the very definition of decorum. I don't remember this dude at all. Yes. He holds the title of the Matt Winter General, I guess somebody for Great Uh So, let's see. And that's then... five. And everyone else that is on this list looks like they're defeated. Unless God Serena comes back, because he yeah that would have to be it. I mean, because um, Jacob's beaten, Nineheart just lost, Wall's already been defeated, Dean Marie has been defeated. Um, yeah, because so there's only uh, you know Brent aside, there's only four of the Spring Twelve left. Because tore through them really fast. <laughs> It'd be great if they're like the Savage Six: Bradman, August, Irene, uh, Invul. Wall and a jail. Well, the last two were better when if they were still up, but they are part of the Savage Six together. Look, it's a top-heavy group. Maybe it's possible that she has like some sort of her own sub squad or something like that. I don't know. It's it's possible. Uh, I guess we'll see. I just said I'm kind of curious. Like the Savage Six, I'm like, are there even six members of the Spriggan Twelve left? Like, I reached my breaking point on this whole thing after they beat Jacob and this latest asshole so goddamn quickly and easily. It's like, every single time he goes, like, oh, this is truly one of the strongest of the Spring 12, they're like, yeah, whatever, I'll believe it when I see yeah. it. Yeah, sure. So, that's fairy tales. It's not bad. It's just not... It just doesn't have much of an impact. Oh, I hate this chapter. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a complete waste of the premise. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's fairy tale in a nutshell. I, I know, but it was really frustrating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, you see, like, this thing that's like, it's like, you know, it's like it's on fast forward. You know, completely not touching on so much that you could do. Uh, it's just be like, and now they have to fight Ur! And and now uh, they have to, Ikagi has to be 
confronted by the memory of her dead brother. Do you remember how that happened? No. Well, but, she got past it, so it's okay. It was essentially like, what? Probably about ten different characters getting character development all concluded in the span of, like, three chapters. It was stupid. Yeah. So I really hated it. All right. Well, Food Wars, then. Yeah. So, it's chapter 164, A Master and Apprentice. Uh, this chapter is about Soma basically fighting back uh, against Tsukasa as he prepares his dish and he recalls his memories training under Shinomiya. Um... And uh, we see a bit of, like, a little bit of Shinomiya's inner thoughts, where by the end of their time together, he was kind of, like, rooting for Soma to actually, you know, become the first seat to stand atop the school, which is nice. But, of course, you know, he was never just like, Soma, I'm counting on you to, you know, carry on my cooking or anything of that. He was just, you know, keeping his thoughts to himself. Um... But, uh, you know, of course, Soma is cooking, Hisako and Arina are observing, uh, and uh, they go for, like, th Soma goes for the thigh meat, and then he's like, oh, wait, I've got to go grab something. Uh, and Sagasta's is like, why are you going through your bag? Oh, yeah, there's just one thing that my dishes are never complete without. And you keep it in your bag? Yeah, now where is it? <laughs> just throwing stuff over his shoulder. Uh, uh, I like the comments that the Arena and Hisako have on this because there's like he certainly keeps a variety of things with him. <laughs> and Hisako's like it's like a little kid with a bunch of snacks in his bag. <laughs> um, and uh, as it turns out, he does have a snack as his special ingredient, which is a <laughs> bag of sweet chestnuts with the tagline "We shall them." <laughs> I had to sit there for a moment, like, what does we shelled a mean? <laughs> they shelled the nuts. They took the shells off. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess when I hear the term shelled, in my mind, I'm like, they put more shell on top of those? <laughs> and now they they'll be extra crunchy. <laughs> we made your nuts even more inconvenient and time-consuming. Oh, boy. Um, and uh, so Hisako is freaking out over this, and Arian is like, huh. I don't know. They don't look like any sweet chestnuts I know of. And he's like, says, they're, well, they're like a candy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, we, we get a little bit of, of uh, Sukasa's cooking technique where he like puts this uh, special lid on over his dish to explain how it's like, oh, yeah, you know, the ambient heat will, will stay inside of it and continue to cook the dish and so on and so forth. And Soma's getting distracted by this. He's like, oh, man, I never you know, learned anything like that, Shinami is. Um, but, uh, you know, Sukasa starts to talk about Soma's technique, and he says, you know, you, you're really unusual, but should you cook that way with eccentric ingredients and odd techniques that may seem interesting, but I doubt they'll come together into a proper dish. And Soma says, well, let me apologize to you in advance because I'm probably going to surprise you again. Um... But, you know, again, I just do really like Sukasa's character, where it's just, he's dismissive of every cooking style that he doesn't think is the right one. And it's not a matter of arrogance, it's just a matter of, like, he, he just is so confident that that's the way things actually are. Uh, so it pulls out a charcoal brazier uh, in order to cook his dish. I have no idea what these two techniques, why these two techniques are why it's important that they're making them in different ways. This is where my food ignorance comes into play with this. It's like, oh, he used this type of heating technique. Well, he used this type of heating technique. Next, like, you don't just throw everything in a toaster and then... Well, actually, you know, you can heat your Pop-Tart. You're like, why do you heat it? <laughs> can't you just eat it right out of the box? <laughs> why, can't you just, why can't you just eat the venison raw, guys? Come on. It shouldn't, shouldn't it just be pre-packaged perfectly? <laughs> it's one of my biggest complaints with... Uh... Uh, the Revenant, if you've seen it or not, there's like a scene where fucking Leonardo DiCaprio is all like, he's just been torn apart by trying to survive, and he like right. comes across like a bunch of buffalo that are dead, like in this place that has a bunch of fires going on from one guy who's killed a bunch, and the you know the Indian who's killed them like sees that he's dying and is like gives him like a pity like huge chunk of meat, and it's right off the buffalo, 
So, like, Leonardo DiCaprio is, like, eating it raw and, like, you know, gagging the entire time. I'm like, dude, there are so many fires around you. Just hold it up to them for, like, two It will minutes. only be, be a few minutes. <laughs> It'd be so much easier. Stop trying to eat raw no, buffalo heart. I have heart. to eat this now and throw it up later. <laughs> like, stop trying to eat raw buffalo heart. I need to eat this now and then throw it up so it will be inedible. <laughs> you think I'm going to get my Oscar for eating cooked meat? <laughs> Oh, God. Um, so, Arina is observing uh, all this, and Hisaku is trying to figure out what he's doing, uh, what Soma is doing. And she's like, I, you know, I've never heard of a French recipe that calls for charcoal grilling of a cut of meat. And Arina says, well, the point of the grill isn't that, it, isn't that it's charcoal, but it's about heat. And she goes over like, uh, you know, oh, you know, venison with this type of uh, burner, this type of grill, this type of thing, so on and so forth. We'll have... Uh, different effects. Um, and he's like, yeah, but it's supposed to be a French dish, and none of that sounds like French cooking technique. And Arina says, well, yeah, you're correct that grilling char you know, charcoal grilling a cut of venison would not qualify as a French dish, which means, in the midst of this contest, he intends to invent a new French dish, one that only Soma Yukihira could make. Um, and, uh, there is a little bit of, like, um, I'm not sure exactly how to describe it. Um, basically, Shinomiya, I guess, off in his restaurant, is thinking about Soma at this time. I believe that that's the impression we're supposed to get. Oh. He's thinking about Soma, and it's like, ah, oh, his strength is that he never stops. He never stops starting, he never stops being curious. That's what gives him the ability to take uh, that one more step that no one else thought to look for. He's one of the few chefs out there that I truly respect. So hurry up and join me up here at the top, Yukihira. Um, and Soma adds something to his dish at the end, and basically he's, he's finished it. And he offers his dish to uh, Sukasa to try it. Um, it looks really good, I should say. as a good-looking dish. Um... But Soma put down his dish first, which yeah, is actually so quite unusual. He's well, done. Actually, he's done for. It's very unusual to see that to see you know the good guy put their dish down first. Um, but yeah, he is totally gonna lose like badly. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it was nice to get a little bit of you know. Uh, Soma has developed, you know, uh, in this chapter. Also nice to see a little bit more of closure in the relationship between he and Shinomiya. Um, but I do look forward to Tsukasa completely schooling him, <laughs> honestly. Tsukasa just being like, oh, that's quaint. I also put sweet chestnuts in my food, though, and perfectly complimented them. And look, this deer is coming to nuzzle me because it wants me to kill it to make a, another side dish crack. Yes, yes, I sh did you, did you not see that before? That girl, like, creamed herself just getting a whiff of the dish. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Imagine if she tastes it. Her vagina is going to explode. <laughs> like that doesn't sound good. No, it's not. It's but it'll happen. But it... <laughs> a lot of people have sacrificed their genitalia to taste my food. <laughs> um, our chapter of food wars. Um, but again, more looking forward to where this goes than anything else. Sure. Assume my hero academia. Let's do it. Number eighty-eight, all for one. Last time, it seemed as if the heroes had completely cornered the Alliance of Villains, and All Might triumphantly said to Shigaraki that it ends here. Um, so, all the villains are super frustrated and freaking out, and Shigaraki is like, yeah, this, this is not ending here. It's a, death is only the beginning, basically. And uh, so, he says, oh, you know, justice this, peace that, all these vague... God damn it. All these vague things. He doesn't happen. burp during his speech. <laughs> Instead, he's just going, All these things are people outside. <laughs> we're flushing through. No. And to do that, we're moving you from the picture, All Might. I've already started finding allies. So make no mistake, this is where it all begins. Kurogi! Oh, 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 shit. Uh, oh. Can you move your hand away from your mouth? They can't hear your epic speech. Mm. Come on, brother, you shouldn't have something so... so, so 
<laughs> you shouldn't keep something over your mouth like that. Come on, bro. No one can understand you if you don't speak and enunciate. Stop with the most wacky voice. You must project from deep inside your lungs. What <laughs> more singing voice you have. Oh. Uh, so he tries to command Kurogi to use his, you know, spatial abilities. But Edshot uh, uses his fold-to-body quirk, which basically lets him, you know, make himself super thin and stretchy. He's, it's a very particular form of, like, you know, stretchy powers, sort of, but his body kind of unravels in order to do it. Uh, and he explains that what he did was he stuck a little bit of himself inside of Kurogi and filled around with him a little bit in order to knock him out. Yeah. <laughs> Which is super terrifying. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, he, meant, he mentioned something like I was able to make use of the weakness that you once exposed. I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about, though. Um, <clears throat> I think that's... That was what... Um, fuck. I, I don't think we... I haven't read that part yet, but it, it shows Bakugo, I believe, using his exposure powers, I guess, to counter what the other guy could do. I guess if you just neutralize the darkness or whatever, he can't do anything. I... Essentially, he's just commenting on the fact that there's a weakness to this guy that you can knock him out. He can't do anything, I guess. Because that would have been way back when the hero, when the villains first debated the school in something like Chapter 20. So. Yeah. Uh, and I like how Bakugo is basically having our reaction, which is, ah, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, but yeah, so... It, it still seems as if they've got the villains completely cornered, and Gran Torino starts naming the villains all there by their real names. You know, like, you're, you're Kenji Hikishi, you're Atsuhiro Sako, you're Shuichi Yaguchi, you're Himiko Toga, and you're Jin Bubaigawara. He's like, go, call me double. Like, I will. Because <laughs> I don't want to say that. Bubaigawara! <laughs> um, and, you know, he's like... He, says, you know, we had very little intel and even less time, and the police still managed to figure out what your identities were. There is nowhere left for you to run. So, Shigaraki, where's your boss? Um, and, uh, Shigaraki starts to freak out. Uh, and, uh, because he, he's like, you know, I'm cornered. Where, what the hell is going on here? You know, I can't lose like this. And he starts to have a flashback to Presumably when he first met All for One, uh, as he was a little kid, and uh, All for One came up to him and said, uh, so nobody came to save you. That must have really hurt Tenkoshimura. Uh, everyone just passed by pretending not to see you, thinking that some hero would save the day. Who decided to make the world this way? It's not your fault. Um, and so Shigaraki, as All Might, you know, demands, like, Yo, where is he? Uh, you know, he, st he still starts to freak out. He's like, I hate you, all my God. But uh, then all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, some Nomu start appearing inside the room as the flashback to All for One meeting him concludes with, You're, you'll be okay now. I'm here for you. And sure, and just as he you know, remembers that, of course, All for One's there for him. And uh, all, all the heroes are like, what the hell? Where are these things coming from? What's this weird black liquid that's dripping off them? You know, did, did Kurogiri do this? And Ed Shot says, no, he's out cold. And where the hell are these guys coming from? And uh, um, All Might says to uh, Kami Woods, don't let them go. You know, keep, keep hold of them. But all of a sudden, the same black king surrounds Bakugo and he disappears immediately right between All Might's arms. Um, so... It's a, it's actually a really terrifying scene, just him disappearing too, because like the black ink spews out of his mouth, and then All Might's trying to grab him, as you know he's freaking out, and then he just disappears right as he's trying to snatch him. It just like kind so, of splats against the ground. Uh, so Kami Woods calls out to Endeavor that they need backup, but the police and heroes outside are having to deal with Nomu as they appear before them as well. And so they're scrambling to try and and uh, and uh, deal with the situation. 
uh, Sukaoshi, the police officer, tries to get in contact with Best Genist, and it's like, well, don't, I thought you had everything under under control. He's trying to contact him, but there's no answer. And, uh, yeah. We cut to two minutes earlier, um, as, understandably, uh, Deku and company kind of are just like, oh, wow, all the heroes are here, Best Genist, Gang Orca, Mount Lady... A uh, tiger. Uh, it looks like they've got everything in hand properly. Yeah, they've. They, they, I guess there wasn't really a, a, a reason for us to be here. You know, we should we should leave and just get out of the way and let the heroes fix this. I'm glad that everything's all right. Um, tiger uh, has ragdoll, and uh, he's freaking out because um, she's not responding to him. And also, uh, they're like, something's up with her. You know, what what have they done? At that moment, uh, an answer comes as a certain shadowy figure with tubes everywhere all over his body appears and says, Well, I've had my eye on her quirk for quite a while. It was just too good. I had to have it. And all the heroes are, are like, you know, you know, stop where you are. And uh, But he continues to speak as he stays in the shadows says, ever since I was reduced to this, my stock has been reduced tremendously. And I'm not sure exactly what happens. Um, I guess Genus attacks him? Genus tries, I believe, to use his strongest technique, because they, they explained the page earlier that he can control cloth fibers at will. So, you know, he can manipulate them. So, presumably, you see that uh, something is strangling that guy's body and Mount Lady's like, you know, don't do that. What if he's just a civilian? They don't actually know who he is yet. And he's like, we can't allow anyone to have any tricks. And just the next shot, it, there's just a long black panel to tell you something happened. And you just see the aftermath, which is the building that they were in is just fucking rubble. And there's an enormous sort of like just debris mark that suggests something huge just ripped through it and you don't see any of the heroes yeah not you, even you, like bodies on the ground just it just nothing. goes from it just goes from best use being like we can't take any risk it could be a villain he's trying to strangle him with his clothes and the next panel is presumably all for one as he's floating in the air and he's talking to himself as the entire building is pretty much gone and Deku and company are crouched behind a wall listening in, fucking terrified, as he says, Tamura's only just learned to think for himself, to carve his own path forward. So if possible, I'd like to keep anyone from interfering with that. And, um, you still don't really see exactly what he looks like. It looks like he's got almost a Bane kind of thing going on around his head. His tubes are everywhere. There's tubes seemingly going into his mouth. But he's so wrapped in shadows you can't see his face. It's drawn in a really intimidating way. Uh, and Deku is just thinking to himself, Jesus Christ, you know, this happened in less than it is that he took out all the strong heroes. And everyone is, all of them are terrified. It looks like Deku's actually about to throw up. Um, uh, so yeah, the villain's lost, but the strongest guy on the planet was there to bail them out, basically, is what happened. Um, so all the people who were upset that the heroes had too easy, you happy now? <laughs> Best genius is dead. Gang Orca is dead because of you guys. Uh, I don't honestly believe those characters are dead, if only because I don't think My Hero Academia is the type of series to kill those sorts of characters en masse. You know, like, it's, it hasn't built itself up with that kind of reputation. But I think they're fucked as shit right now. Like, if anything, they're probably all, you know, they might be crippled or out of commission for a while. Regardless, this is an amazing chapter. Like, my only thought after reading it was just like, holy fuck. Because it's so, like, there's so much to it. Like, you, you, it follow, you know, follows up with the heroes kind of explain, like, look, I don't know why you didn't think we'd do our research that we wouldn't have plans in place we knew how to counter you guys we learned it all thanks to Bakko we know your weakness like we, we've learned all this stuff and it cuts over we, we get to see how Shigaraki first kind of met the one who the guy who says all for one um, 
And just that speech he starts giving him about like, oh, no, no hero came to save you. You know, I, it's not your fault. I'll, I'll be there no matter what. And it, you can see from just that kind of conversation how we'd get or how Shigaraki gets the way he is, why he hates heroes so much, why he particularly hates All Might so much, the hero who could supposedly do anything, and he's the one who, you know, he feels abandoned by heroes, so he'd feel abandoned by All Might the most. So seeing his hatred come to light in that moment, in the same panel that a bunch of Nomu just explode out of these, like, geysers of black ink, just the, the art complements everything this chapter is trying to do so well. And just the fact that All for One shows up and we don't even see what happens. We just see the aftermath. And you can't even really comprehend what the fuck he just did. You just know he eliminated like three of the world's best heroes immediately. Without uh, any sort of difficulty. There are some people in the chat pointing this out. And now I look much more closely. You can see like they're slumped over bodies. Their bodies being there doesn't mean that they're alive or dead though. I just yeah. want to point that out. <laughs> but just like the, just the fact you just see the, the destruction of it. And he's and it's just, like, it's he's, not just the building they're in. There's, like, you know, buildings across the street have collapsed from the yeah. strength of this guy's attack. Essentially, it, like, it's like some, like, fucking Goku just showed up and just Kamehameha across the city in a series Basically. where that isn't the norm. So it's it's crazy. I love he just he how he explains. He's like, I can't let you do this now because Tamora's just starting to learn to think for himself and carve a path forward. It's, it's kind of cool. You're seeing... This, this main antagonist here kind of looking out for his own pupil in a way. Like, it's, it's clearly like an insidious relationship, but it's just such an effective way of introducing this guy and just making him seem so terrifying. It's a fantastic chapter. Um, and I, I loved every moment of it. I, I think it's it was a great chapter. I, I've already put all for one on my best villain list just for this. Okay. Uh, and uh, now let's talk about Naruto. Okay. Uh, there was a special one-shot chapter called Naruto, The Path Lit by the Full Moon, this week. Uh, continuing the sequel series building, basically. Uh, and this one deals with uh, Mitsuki, the uh, white-skinned member of Bolt's team uh, in the sequel series. <laughs> Uh, as I think that we all at least suspected it, uh, it turns out that he uh, is, is Orochimaru's child. Um, basically, he was grown in a lab by Orochimaru. Uh, and uh, he just, you know, wakes up in, in uh, a bed in this kind of operating room. Uh, Orochimaru's there, Suigetsu's there. And uh, he's like, what What happened? Who am I? What What happened here? And they're like, well, you went on a mission with Orochimaru, and uh, the guy that you fought has the ability to steal memories in order to, you know, gain information and stuff. So he stole your mem memories from you, and that's why you can't remember anything. Um, but uh, so you guess he was kind of like explained this to Mitsuki while Orochimaru speaks with a figure in a cloak, uh, one who is notably smoking and uh so so he gets to like attacks uh mitsuki in order to basically like say oh good you know you, you instinctively remember how to defend yourself as a ninja and so on and so forth also it's totally okay that you stab me because water <laughs> um and so mitsuki uh, agrees to go on a mission with her to go after this guy who allegedly stole his memory so that he can remember who he is and so on and so forth uh, they refer to the guy as Log because, like, a memory log. Makes sense. Um, and Mitsuki is, like, is suspicious because he's like, well, why were we going after this guy in the first place when he first stole my memories? And Orochimaru's like, uh, because of the intel he collected from people up to that point. <laughs> we were going to capture him and extract that information. Uh, right. Uh, uh. Um... So, uh, there are a couple of points where Virgimar is just like, just fucking come along. You're, you're my child and you're my soldier. You, see, you do what I fucking say. And Mitsuki is going to like, okay. Um, they come across uh, the guy log and we have, they have a fight scene. Um, and 
uh, it eventually gets to a point where Orochimaru basically disables them using a paralyzing venom, uh, and then walks off in order to uh, obtain something that the guy has stolen. But the guy, but the guy starts saying, "You're being deceived by Orochimaru. Uh, you, Orochimaru is tricking you, just like he tricked me." And he gets convinces Mitsuki to take his mask off and reveal that he is also Mitsuki. He just goes, "I am also Mitsuki." But just older and better looking, and there's a cool scar on my cheek. I was made before you. Also, brothers, I don't know. Um, and he explains that uh, Mitsuki is, you know, was grown for this purpose. And he says, your name, it means me, like the snake. And Suki, like a vessel. So you are a snake vessel. See, this is important because of the way that the chapter ends, because there are certain words that mean different things. Yes. Uh, so, um, the older Mitsuki explains that the reason he opposes Orochimaru now is because he considers that them to be sort of an affront to humanity. They don't deserve to exist. And so Orochimaru comes back in while they're having this co- while they're having this conversation. And young Mitsuki is left with a choice, which is to obey either Orochimaru or to listen to old Mitsuki and rebel against him. Um, and uh, so, you know, Orochimaru's like, I have recovered the seeds, you know, the, I can keep on making Mitsuki's. And uh, older Mitsuki's like, you need to stop him. And Orochimaru's like, no, you should listen to me because you are my child. And Mitsuki shatters the older Mitsuki's mask and is still like, I don't fucking care about any of this. Oh, you guys, goddamn adults talking about stuff. Whatever. I'm going to decide for myself. And he's surrounded by these... It's kind of like he unleashes, like, tailed beast form stuff, but he's surrounded by these energy snakes. Looks pretty badass, I think. Uh, and he snatches the seed away from Orochimaru and runs away with it. And, uh, so... It turns out that the older Mitsuki was actually the shadowy figure that Orochimaru was talking about at the beginning of the chapter, and that they actually uh, had been playing this from the beginning to try and get an artificial life form to actually think for themselves, to choose a third option rather than choosing between the two that they were confronted with. And uh, so they managed to successfully do that this time, and uh, basically they've given Mizuki information on what he could potentially do in the future by telling him about Konoha and Bolt and so on and so forth. And there's this very poetic thing that they go on about. It's like, well, you know, he likely can't become the light on his own, but he is able to find a, the sun who will stick by his side and shine upon him. Then he can become moonlight and illuminate the dark. It's like, I get it. Yes, because his name does not mean snake vessel. It means Mitsuki Snake Moon. Like, I don't care. I don't like this character. There were a couple of lame moments, but honestly, I thought that overall it was pretty. It was pretty cool. It's fine. It's it's just a character who, and this is just a personal preference thing. I I just don't care for these sorts of characters, like the ones who are like, I'm created to be the antithesis of everything of the the rest of the group. I'm created I... to be the rival. Like. Uh, I am Shadow, the ultimate life form. Yeah, yeah he's essentially Shadow. And after, get, and after getting all 16 endings of my game, you get the true ending where I learn to think for myself. <laughs> Maria. I did See, that for people, Maria. People, I'm not actually a good guy or a bad guy. I just do things for that I'm one girl guy. my friend. <laughs> now I'm going to cock my, fi- my, my fist and use my chaos control. <laughs> People always comment on the fact that uh, Sonic has that relationship with the princess in Sonic 06. Like, that's so weird. I'm like, yeah, but Shadow Shadow's is totally gonna fuck Maria <laughs> in Sonic Adventure no, 2. No, 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 she was my childhood friend. No, stop being creepy. Uh, this is why I want to destroy the world, because of creeps like you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use guns. <laughs> <laughs> I, have rocket, I have rocket shoes, so I skate along the ground. I have to get in a motorcycle in order to travel quickly, even and, though I can actually run faster than every car I And despite drive. how absurdly lame I am, I'm still by far the coolest of all of Sonic's alternate rivals. 
It's really bad when I'm actually probably the third best Sonic character at this point, <laughs> even though everyone hates me. <laughs> oh god. Oh. At least I had. At least I was smart enough not to show up in Sonic Boom. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta give me that. I'm not as bad but, as the Silver the Hedgehog or whatever his psychic bullshit. Friend it's is. no use. <laughs> anyway. Uh, very briefly, Anisogoy heading down the home stretch. Chijige is still trying to avoid everyone, but Onodera is like, "No, I want you to be my friend, and I like R Raku, and I know you like Raku too." Blah blah blah. It seems like something that we're probably not going to be able to actually talk about until it's all actually done. Yeah. Because these individual chapters are just like it's kind of weird and like sitcommy. It's, you, you know, know, there's some funny art, but it's not worth really spending too much time on it. There much. was some really funny art in this chapter. Like, the bits where she just turns into a freaking zombie because she's freaking out uh, so much. But that's about it. Uh, which brings us to One Piece. Yes. We've got a lot of voices we're going to have to do for this one. So, I suppose it's only fair to send off Comedy Month and the special recap special thing we do with a chapter that I think actually has the most voices of any chapter we did this for. Because, you know, it's one piece, there's a the, lot of dialogue and stories. I think the greatest number to this point has been like 17. And I feel this has to have more. Because I feel right. like there's like eight people on the boat to begin with, and this cuts between like three or four different places. So, if it's not the most, there's definitely a lot of characters. But uh, we should have some fun with it. I do like the uh, two-page color spread that we get at the beginning with the uh, with the straw hats riding on a koala coaster, uh, and I like the various reactions that the straw hats are having. You know, Brooke and Chopper and Nami and Usopp are all freaking out, and so and Zoro's like, "Whatever, I got beer." Who oh, stop? Stop making me spill my beer. <laughs> and and Sanji apparently has enough room in the coaster to freaking shish kebabs. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's fun. Uh, anyhow, um, I believe that this is Luffy at the beginning. Alright, so random generated voice for Luffy is Benzai. Oh no, oh no. Well, it, I guess it's only appropriate that it's one that we can alternate between. Yeah. Uh, you wanna get what? Me? The revolutionaries got beaten? Question mark, explanation, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, what's his name, Pedro? Is that him? Yes. He is Luna from Sailor Moon. Yo, you got all the revolutionary dragons. Ew, Sabu, that's my brother. <laughs> uh, Brooke. I don't want to make you do the cinema snob again. Um, it's such an appropriate voice for him, too. <laughs> Ah, all right. Andrew Dice Clay for Brooke. God. Oh, well, that's you then. Oh, the one you said we meet and dress Rosa, your other brother, the chief of staff. Oh, wait a minute. That's the number two man of the Revolutionary Army. Oh, no, not uh, me. Right. All right. Let's yes. uh, plop her in there. Michael Kane. Okay, I can do that. <clears throat> What kind of trio of brothers are you? Huh? And then this dragon guy next to him is, a. Uh... Like, yeah. <laughs> Remember what your grandpa said two years ago. <laughs> two things. First, there's something hilarious about Michael Caine saying the word like before a sentence. Like the most proper, sophisticated gentleman talking like a like, family girl. Like, Luffy, you have totally got to go shopping with me. So like. we can totes get some hot boys to go out with us. Second. Hmm, your father's name is Minky T. Dragon, the revolutionary. Oh, no. Lisa's father's name is Dragon, Chief Grand Commander, Revolutionary Army. Yay! There's a little Kermit uh, in there. That's Nami's voice there, though. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I cut half of your Dragon, voice. Chief Commander of the Revolutionary Army. Is your father, remember? 
This my did? Um, I guess this is... Oh, you just put it together? And we don't have a carrot yet. That's, that's carrot, yeah. Carrot is Kaiba. What? Luffy's father is the boss of the revolutionaries. It's a little bit snake, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta say it. I gotta say it. The Blue Eyes White Dragon! Luffy's father is the boss of the revolutionaries! There we go. Uh, why, why wouldn't you be curious? Your father's so famous. Robin said she was working under him all that time we were apart. Oh, it's the first time I've seen him. It doesn't look like me. More importantly, I'm worried about Sabu. And all of those tacos, which are going to tear my belly apart. You can't catch me, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, a picture's not the same as seeing someone in real life. Yo, oh, 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 oh. This entire thing's been worth it for Andrew Dice Clay's Brook laugh. Um, oh, God. Chopper's is... two lines are going to be Bane. Oh, <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, he, he talks later on. Oh, okay. Do you want uh, me to do it? Uh, yes, you might as well. Hi, Rufy! Hi! Hi, Rufy! Pay attention to me! I'm in the back <laughs> Talk to me! It says that through an anonymous source, the location of the army's HQ was revealed. But by the time the Navy and Cypher Pole arrived. The Blackbeard pirates had already leveled the settlement to the ground. The Blackbeard? I hate those guys! <laughs> Why would Blackbeard attack the revolutionaries? Ah, uh, champion! Just want to watch the world burn. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, champion guy that fought Sabo back in Dressrosa. Maybe he had something to do with it. It says Blackbeard clashed with Cypher Paul briefly before fleeing, but there was no info about fatalities in the article. Um, oh. <laughs> if your grandfather or brother were captured or killed, that would have been major news, so perhaps we can assume they're still alive. Oh yeah, good point, lion thingy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Jeez, where is it already? Oh, uh, thanks for cooking and everything. But, uh, is that supposed to be happening? Question mark? Question mark double exclamation point? Fire? Ah, I forget that you have to stop. Kaboom! Um, I don't know who these ah, are. Ah, something exploded. Put out the fire! Wait! There's a storm coming! What? <laughs> Which is the sound lightning makes, I guess. <laughs> Eek! What is this? Electro? Uh. Voice the sails! The wind will rip them to shreds! Uh. Fucking, I don't know. Oh! What's what about, about the fire? <laughs> The rain will put it out. Oh, whoa, that's super lucky. Nothing about this is lucky, Master Wayne. <laughs> Actually got the smack in there. <laughs> I like how he, like, he's saying that while being smacked, and he's still just like... <sighs> uh, oh, yeah. uh, you oh, that's two. a pickup slide. That's a Pickham's line right there. Yeah, that's the one Peckham's line I think we get in this. He's Maximilian Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half dead here. Grow. <laughs> Grow. Turn into the Snagglepuss for a little bit there. Alright, so I think this so... is not Wanda. This is, oh, this is, is Wanda. It's okay. Wanda, and then uh, Barriette. Alright, well, Wanda's Edamon. <laughs> Oh, God. And uh, the monkey's shaggy, so I guess... All right, you be Edamon, then. Oh, so you're, you're saying the carrot's out at sea right now? <clears throat> yeah! 
Why didn't you tell us about this sooner, Barrietti? Barrietti? Monkey little like, thingy? Like, I apologize, Wanda. Maybe I could have told someone and stopped her, but Karen had already packed up her stuff, and... Oh, be honest there. She brought you a tear off, didn't she? Yeah, but, but Carrot didn't want to betray you, Wanda. Comfort in pit. <laughs> Exclamation point. It's fine. I'm um, just did you glad we know where she's headed. I was more worried about her being missing. Mm. She'll be safe if she's with Luffy's group. Not, not, not. Please, take your rest now, your grace. Uh, That's still her. Oh, I thought that was Dog Storm talking. Sorry. Uh, no, he doesn't talk until Dot Dot. I will uh, put extra guards put in place. All right. All right now it's Dog Storm. <laughs> Christian Bale Batman. <laughs> no, I got it. <clears throat> <clears throat> dot Dot Dot. <laughs> I suspect the enemy has a Viva card. <clears throat> but how did they get it? I only hope that the card was lost within the ship's Zunatia sank. Oh, do you think they'll come on back? We must be vigilant. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, like three lines from Jack. Jack. As. And trying to get ones we haven't done on this one already. <laughs> Bill Cosby, do you want to take it or should I? We'll call them quick. Go quick and pull me out. <laughs> Well, <laughs> oh, you'll see! It's gonna be easily misconstrued as a rape joke because of the pull out in the mouth. Ah! Alright. Okay. We need. Wait, in a certain land. If one can just says. I think that. Who the fuck is. I, oh, that's an old line. We need to delete. Well, oh, there's a. Uh, there's Kaido's followers, and then there's Kaido himself. Mm. Uh, who's it start with? Kaido's followers. Okay. We'll give them, like, a... Alright, Maxime and Pegasus for his followers. We already did Maxime and Pegasus. Alright, then uh, his Back followers will be... Let me just do Michael Caine. We already can't use Jar Jar twice. <laughs> Uh, you know what, fuck, I'm just gonna pick one out of here. They're going to be Yoda. Mmm! Jack's attempt to recapture Joker. Failure it ended with him. <laughs> uh, oh, do we need a second one for the other one? For, for Kaido. Oh, is this Kaido? Oh, okay. He's crying. Uh, he's crying right there. He's gonna be Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Alright. That makes sense to me. An arrangement for those smile artificial devil fruits. An arrangement. An end puts to. <laughs> I can't I understand my fucking followers. It's so confusing. You <laughs> know, <laughs> we can't even make any more getters, even. <laughs> I didn't get an Oscar. I really. I'm so sad. Is he so great? <laughs> I don't even remember the other guy. We're just surprised. It's just middle snakey and it's still whatever. <laughs> A crying drunk he is today. <laughs> but, but he said we make the greatest crew entirely out of the power uses. Uh, before the dream could come true, he got worked over by a bunch of kids. Uh, you poor, poor Joker, all because you're such a terrible weakling. Uh, but a man of the time, Straw Hat is. If underestimate him, you do. <laughs> if I underestimate him. <laughs> why? Uh, why even? Uh, points of exclamation. <laughs> Arrgh! Who do you think I am? Yeah. Eep! An angry chunk he turned into. <laughs> yeah, Straw Hat Luffy, Chapter 11, Bula. I know what they call you, Generation. You Welsh proud of Wimpy out mere warlords of the sea. Yeah, you must realize that you messed in my business. 
Whoa, 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 hey, I bet you can warn those idiots in your generation. Run away now while you can. All we're doing is playing pirates. Eustace, Captain, Kid. So, uh, yeah, kind of fucking beat the shit out of uh, Kid, it seems. Hmm, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Back on the Thousand Sunny. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to assume that this is Carrot. Uh, brr, it's cold! Uh, I'll do I Bane, guess... you do <laughs> Benzai. Right, okay. right. We're past we, past we passed him through! Roof. Very nice work. All right, the storm is past. We passed up the roof that blew up. And we kept the food safe, so now you get to eat my cooking. Yay, food, we're starving. God! Whoa. Oh, is it that good? It's my kitchen sink Uh, Luffy, rice is inedible unless you cook it. What's the better purple stuff? It's full of fish bones. Oh, an enormous mess of jam! There's something clear and sticky! I forget what it was. What did we did. ever do to you? That's right, he was. Ah, oh, good on you. I've got it all written down this time, so. Hey, you guys are really rude considering I made this for you. A bear! It's a Taco Bell! <laughs> See? We told you! This is an elbow! Don't flip the table over! S Sanji will be mad that you're wasti wasting what is technically food. <laughs> it is ironic that this in this universe, Sanji is the one getting me food poisoning to everyone else. <laughs> huh? All that food we loaded? Gone? Oh uh, yeah, I screwed up a bunch, so I used it all up! What? I wait worth the food for all of us? I figured you'd be hungry. Ah, ah, ah. And so, in just the first day of Luffy's journey, what are we supposed to do now? Uh, I'm so hungry. Sanji, come and save us! The crew was at risk of starvation. Several days later, Big Mom's ship. Oh, Should we God. do a voice for the ship? <laughs> uh, let's see. Sure. <laughs> ship P. Ship P. <laughs> what a waste of Christopher Walken. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. All right. It's a Sanji and then the French dude. <laughs> I don't know why this fits so much. Sanji will be John F. Kennedy. <laughs> well, Man. I thought this was snow, but... <laughs> I'm trying to get a good voice for the other guy. I think we've done most of the ones in here, though. Uh... Oh, one didn't come up that I wanted to, but doesn't I work right now. And fuck um, it, I'm just gonna make this guy Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's one I have I wanted to use but didn't come up before this, but it doesn't work as like a one off. I'll explain later. Alright, All right, it's fine. What? No. Whoa! Ho ho! <laughs> it's like cotton candy flurry. <laughs> the most unconvincing French accent <laughs> ever. <laughs> that phone's been ringing off the hook. Mmm, sweet. Like Marilyn's, well, never mind. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's La Signal Durance. <laughs> it means that we've entered Le Tutoria de Mama. <laughs> Does the signal extend to that spot over there? What? No. I mean, very good. That <laughs> is the Tarte 28. The 28th Tart. It's oh, a thank big... you for the translation. I speak absolutely no Spanish or whatever you are speaking. It's fine. I'm fluent in French. It is a base 
Militare. It houses a platoon of Le Mom's big ships. If this were not Big Mom's ship, we would suffer. Boom! Le Bombardment? <laughs> Do not be stubborn, mon ami. Follow Germa's 66 example and enter the Big Mom Pirate's operation. This is what your father, Boa Coop, desires. <laughs> He and I have been through for ages. I'm only going to clear all of this up. What? Well, ease your hostility. Mama is in lay mood defilicitations. <laughs> she is a She is aware, of course, that you are a comrade of the foolish straw hat, and you worked on Le Cruziner aboard the restaurant in the East Blue. In fact, she admires you for these qualities. That's not even a French word. There's <laughs> an accent on it though, so it's weird. Depending on your skill, she may even offer you a better position. Enough of the jokes. The only use for these hands of mine is to cook food for my companions. <laughs> Nothing else. Your job of candy's too good. <laughs> I survived a horrifying hell to train my skill. I'm sure they're missing my food by now. I can see their tearful faces. Whoa! Ho ho! Cest absurde! <laughs> I would never make a dish for the kind of people who destroy their own partners without blinking. Ah? Uh, you mean Peckham's? What? No! He made his business personal. Beg a BG, BG was right. <laughs> uh, Vito has a little bit. Oh, here. okay. We got a new, new voice for him. Oh, damn. Ah, oh, it came up. Fuck it. So I put in here each other. So whoever oh. does it just has to do it as the impersonation of the other. I can't do you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it would go pretty easy, right? I, our voices are like a little bit too similar, if you know what I mean. I guess we do speak in different ways. Um, I mean, uh, my version of you is just going to be insulting. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Baron Tomago! <laughs> what? Vito? Every fucking thing you say, Ram. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. We've got a photo of Lady Pudding from Hall at Cake Island. Lolo, it's a little gift to you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can't. I, do you want me to do you for his line there, then? You might as well do the next one, because it's like, I mean, well, I guess he does close the chapter, unfortunately, but go ahead. After all, it's hard to marry a guy. <laughs> what the fuck work. is that? <laughs> right on the spot. That's I'm trying ridiculous. to like imagine my mustache growing, and that's the voice right. of channeling. That's no different from seeing her a few days ahead. I'm not getting married. Just take a Lila look, Lila look. This is your bride to be, the thirty-fifth daughter of the Charlotte family, Charlotte. Pudding! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point! <laughs> Got a little bit dollar there. <laughs> um, so as I suspected, uh, Charlotte uh, is of course a total looker, and Sanji is fucking freaking out over her. I do appreciate the full-on Tex Avery uh, eyes and tongue bulging out in the shape of hearts for her. Um, I mean, it's only appropriate, you know, for a character like Sanji that his bride, who he totally doesn't want to marry, would be his type of woman, so. I'm trying to see if there are any voices we didn't get at all. I got the Crypt Keeper in here. He never popped up, though. That's a shame. And the Joker. Neither of them showed up. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. What are you going to do? Still, yeah. that was some fun. I enjoyed. We found a lot of voices that we now can do between the two of us that I don't think we realized were possible before. 
Uh, people do really, people did really like um, uh, JFK Sanji, and I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, the entire thing was worth Mark Wahlberg's French accent. <laughs> oh god! Well, it was to make those permanent now. No, do not. Do not be Le Resistant. <laughs> what? No, it's Le Signal, the Surrent. <laughs> Which we're means in... the Surrent Signal. <laughs> we're in the Territoria de Mama. Mama's Territory. It's a base, Militare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Um, yeah, very talky chapter of One Piece. Some good funny moments here and there. Uh, not a whole lot established other than, oh, you Kaido completely fucking destroyed kid. Um, worst generation. Other than Law and Luffy and Zoro, things aren't looking too good for them so far. Well, that's, that's what's so interesting to me is that Eustace was built up to be the biggest of the supernovas. Like, he was, he had a bigger bounty than Law, or than Law had. He had a bigger bounty than anyone had. He was the only member of the Supernovas who had another Supernova working for him. He was mm -hmm. part of that three-man group with Luffy and Law who kind of got their own standalone moment. Like, he was built up to be a huge deal. So, seeing him here, I don't think he's been crumbled. I think he's still going to be a very powerful character. It's just, it seems rather telling that he's the character. Like, kicking Oroge's ass or, you know, someone else wouldn't mean a whole much. But it just goes to show, I guess, how strong Kaido is that you know, kids getting the shit kicked out of him. Right. Okay. Oh, and that, that's... maybe that attempted alliance between their group and uh, him did not work out as well as they hoped it would. Maybe one of them betrayed him. <laughs> uh, but I guess we'll see how, how uh, things turn out with them. Let's move on because we've already been going for a, quite a while. Let's move on to, uh, fuck it. Toriko. 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 Can I explain um, it my way? Go right ahead. So, what do you think happens in Toriko? Uh, like the wolf hears the sound of uh, Jiro dying, and he's really sad because it's his son. Right. So he cries out for all the other kings to band together, and they're like, "Oh wow, that's pretty cool." And they mention like the gourmet eclipse has begun, and gods come out, so all their demons activate. And I'm like, "Cool, this is an interesting chapter." And then it just goes batshit for like eight straight pages of nonsense, where uh, Medora is fighting. Joey, Froch. Joey, Froch, whatever, or uh, Froze, whatever fucking uh, alias she goes by. And it's just the most confusing explanation to both of them because it's the negative zone and still his face is like exploding but then like unexploding in moments and he eats all the bacteria that was here that she was trying to kill him with but that was part of her plan but then that was part of his plan but then... She uses food luck to trick him momentarily. It's like, okay, Chris, you have that One Piece forum RPG that you uh, run. Sometimes, if there is not proper moderation on those types of boards, here's what it degenerates into. I use my ultimate unavoidable technique that will totally be anyone. But I have the ability... To stop your unavoidable, unstoppable technique with my own unavoidable, unstoppable technique. Well, I have a double unstoppable, unavoidable technique. You know, it essentially yeah, like degenerates. like a fighting bleach. Right. It eventually degenerates into, I hit you. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I hit you. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You missed. You know, kids playing pretend without rules turns into chaos, essentially. Yeah. And it's like that. Where, so, Joey says i used the 0.1 seconds that i needed in order to prepare you and i've started preparing you by pulling you into the zone and Dora's like no you're in my hungry space you filled this space with bacteria but it's fine i ate all the bacteria and now i'm going to stop you well i have food luck so you can't possibly harm me because i have such powerful food luck everyone everything works out for me and that's because the bacteria that you is surrounded us with did you notice that they didn't attack me that's because of my food luck and now i'm going to start cooking you and Medora's like no i'm invisible and for and joy's like well it doesn't matter if you're invisible because food luck and now you're an ingredient on my cutting board and i'll prepare you and then Medora's like no because we're in minority world it's so i've beaten you oh my god's here 
I paid attention. Stop paying attention for point one second. She's like, that's all I needed to seal you in a can. And now you're inside of this little tuna can. <laughs> oh god, that was hard. It's but so thanks to my food luck, I won. Uh, the ultimate, you know, conclusion of this is that Midora, though, is sealed away in essentially a Pokeball. Mm -hmm. So he's been defeated temporarily without being killed, unlike a lot of the extraneous but super powerful characters in the series that could get involved in the fight between Toriko and company and Acacia and Joey and stuff. We're narrowing the field of characters that can get involved in this and have now kind of going towards, you know, these are our heroes and these are the villains. There's not going to be, you know, less and less involvement from side characters because they're dead or they're sealed away. Um, and I'm fine with that, but yeah, I completely am on board with you in terms of, like, it's so weird and confusing and Infinity plus one versus Infinity plus two constantly one-upping until eventually it's like, I still do it again! <laughs> because I can do that, I guess. It's like, I have um, no idea what happens for half this chapter. <laughs> And then something starts rising up from the earth beneath Toriko's group. Uh, and that's where the chapter ends. Yes. They're talking about gods going to appear. <sighs> okay. Almost there. World Trigger. Uh, World Trigger, uh, chapter 141, Tamakoma 2, part 12. Uh, last time, Tamakoma split into Yuma and Osamu facing off against a different team each with uh, Chika covering both of them with her sniper rifle. Um, and uh, Katori is continuing to try and charge in towards Osamu. Uh, the uh, Kakizaki squad is still trying to get a, a hold of uh, Yuma. Um, and uh, a lot of different... They're trying a lot of different techniques in order to try and uh, cut the distance in, in order to... Uh, get their respective opponents down. Uh, Kaki's Zaki squad is very clearly, like, working together a lot better. Mm. Uh, there are some cool things that they're trying to do. Uh, the uh, boy, whose name I forget, does this cool, like, underarm uh, shot thing in order to try and attack Yuma. Um, but there is this really awesome... Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, Yuma counters his sword attack and then leans back and shoots a grasshopper up from his arm to launch uh, Tomoe, is his name, into the air, which leaves him vulnerable for Chika, and he tries to block it, but of course she shot a lead bullet which penetrates the shield. He falls to the ground because of the lead bullet, and Yuma executes him. Just decapitates him. And it's like, holy shit, finally something happened in this fight. It looks like he executes him with his uh, with a leg blade, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome kill. And, uh, yeah, uh, Tamakoma 2 gets the first points. Uh, so, um, the Katori squad learns about this. And uh, what's-his-face glasses guy who fucking hates her uh, says, you, you get this, right? We can't waste our time... You know, dealing with this guy, we've got to get the sniper, or else you know, he was just going to start cutting them down, and we're going, and they're going to pull ahead. Uh, and their operator says that they've got to take out uh, Tomiko and sniper. So they're like, okay, maybe we can just like ignore Mikumo, like go around him. And Victoria says, well, no, he's just going to keep on setting up wires. So why don't we, you know, just cut him down now because he's the easiest to kill. We should start with him instead of wasting our try on on other people. We'll just take him down and fuck him. Uh, <laughs> fuck him. Fuck that guy, basically. Well, the, the way you phrase it is, we're going to take him down and fuck him. Like, oh. You no, don't get points sure. for that, do you? I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that if there's any shit that's going to come out of this, it's going to be Katori and Rakuro of hate fucking, basically. Oh, yeah. So. That's a pretty strong one. Uh, I, can totally, I can totally see people shipping that. That makes sense. Uh, so yeah, she's like, Rokuro, attract the sniper's attention. You and I are gonna nail four eyes while removing the wires. <laughs> Let me just put on my strap on for this. Have I told you about my pegging trigger before? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, they, they do exactly that. Rokuro draws fire from Chica while Katori charges forward. And, uh, something 
uh, Osama changes things up with his spiders by summoning red wires. And Katori's just like, no, nah, we can ignore them. He's just trying to trick us. Ignore them. Just just worry about the normal wires while we're kind of way through and get, and get after him. And, oh my god, Chris, you must have loved this so much. <laughs> I mean, I didn't... I wasn't crazy about it because I'm not quite sure what happened yet. Like, I, it's it's clear, like... I guess he uses the fact that he changes part of the uh, wires into a red wire to make them obvious, makes it so she's not as attentive to the ones that aren't there. She trips. Chica and gets a shot. on her ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's great. Like, that's hilarious. And fucking Chica gets her right in the leg and she has to cut it off. I want him to kill her, though. I want, <laughs> I want a moment where she's like, finally, I have you. And he's like, that's what I wanted you to think. And immediately just comes out of nowhere and just explodes right in her pussy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's not even, not even a lethal blow. She's like, oh, why? This is such an awkward shot. It's like going to be some, like, gigantic, uh, you know, uh, finishing cinematic technique from a fighting game where, like, you know, you just, in, within the fight, you know, you just do the punch and then it triggers the cutscene. Oh, yeah. He, like, strings her upside down with a bunch of spiders. Like, he and... fucking uppercuts her into space. <laughs> and then she lands on, like, a geyser of exploding Tryon. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Katori's not down, but the fact that she's lost her leg, you know, their ace has lost her leg, is a really big blow to them. Uh, and, you know, Katori Squad is just freaking out. This is like, I can't believe this. This is, you know, following their plan all the way through. Um, and, uh, but then we cut over to uh, Kakizaki Squad, uh, where, um, what's her name? I don't remember the girl's name. But, uh, you know, she, say, she says, you know, the captain, I need to go after Mamatori. Um, you know, it seems like Katori Squad is not going to, you know, be able to join up with us. We're never going to take down Tamakoma at this pace. We need to change things up. And it's a nice little moment where Kakizaki kind of hesitates. And then he looks like, kind of proud of her for taking the initiative. He's like, okay, yeah, you go do it. And that's where the chapter ends. It's interesting, too, because Yuma, in response, seems surprised that it looks like she's about to go independent. Like, I, I guess he didn't think they would. Now, perhaps he was just kind of shocked, like, oh, I hope no, but I, everything thus far seems to be going exactly as they planned, but I don't think this is, like, the turnabout. I think Kakizaki Squad's kind of, you know, this is a small chance of, like, hey, this girl's growing, and, you know, as a leader, I'm the one who's maybe been holding you back a little bit. They seem, He seemed to suggest that he was the one that wasn't really up to par with the rest of his group, something like that. But it's interesting. I'm I'm hoping the next chapter we get's kind of gonna start leading into the climax or conclusion of this because we're we're definitely right. moving into that. Points are starting to be made. I don't know. Yuma didn't look very shocked to me, honestly. I think that's just kind of his like neutral, an almost neutral face for him. I feel like if he's not in the duck face, then he's taking things seriously. He just seems a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you imagine if, like, he, when he executed uh, Tomoe, he was, he was still just going, like, oh, this is super easy. Look at that. your face. <laughs> I'm not even going to look and cut it off like a fucking ballerina. It's a fun chapter of World Trigger this week. Uh, so, good way to cap things off. Uh, so, yeah, let's wrap things up. Uh, that was the weekly manga recap for this week. Uh, let's do our MVPs and series of the week. Uh, I actually did consider doing World Trigger for me, but uh, honestly, like, it can't be really anything other than My Hero Academia. It's such a goddamn good chapter. Um, and, you know, our first real look at All for One was a really good impression. So it's got to be that for me. I, I liked it. It was, uh, it was a good chapter, um, but my chapter of the week is uh, My Hero Academia. Is that what you just said? Just that is what it? I just said. I thought, you, you, said, well, I thought you went with World Trigger still. I was confused there for a moment. Yeah, all for one, showing up in World Trigger. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I went with My Hero Academia. It, it's, it, to me, it, 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 other chapters are very good, but this one to me is like a no contest. This was just a fantastic, cool, awesome, like the chapter of the series thus far for me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it also won our uh, audience poll in yeah. the chat, too. Uh... In terms of characters, I'm actually a little bit torn. Um, I do think that uh, All for One probably deserves it, but honestly, like, Shigaraki seemed like a 
he, he kind of stood out in that bit too. Just he doesn't really do much, but to see you know insight into his backstory, uh, to see him freaking out in a way that we haven't really seen him do before, um, I thought that that was really interesting too. Um, I am still actually very torn on this. I'm still not quite sure what my answer is going to be, honestly. There's definitely some some good choices this week. You have Soma, I think it would be a fine one. Um, uh, Yuma has a really awesome moment. Kaido's, you know, wacky and funny. Um, there, there's definitely characters in there. Shigaraki, I can totally agree with. But for me, it, it's the same thing here. This is one dude who just stood apart. Like, a character can give me the kind of reaction he did deserves it immediately. So I, I'm giving it to all for one. He, he was absolutely the MVP of it for me. And... You know, like going through it, I'm like, I'm trying to remember all the chapters again this time. And it's like, yeah, it's, it really can't be anyone other than him. Like that immediate impression. Um, and also, of course, he does also really benefit from the flashback that Shigaraki has. Uh, seeing the mean how he took him in and started to turn him into the villain that he is today. Yeah. Uh, and also it, it does help that. Well, I do agree that there are some characters that have some good moments. Like, no one has a real standout moment other than him. Uh, so that is that. Uh, so, guys, thank you for joining us for Weekly Manga Recap. We record the show normally Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, though we needed to change things up uh, for our schedules to be able to uh, allow for this recording, which is why we did it today. Uh, but... We will probably next week be back to uh, doing it on hitbox.tv slash RoloT on Wednesday. Well, we don't know uh, about what we're doing next week because there's no jump. Yeah, we don't week. know if we're actually going to do it. We'll, we'll see. Stay. Yeah. You can follow us on Twitter, though, to stay <laughs> updated on that stuff because he is at RoloT. I'm at Y Roller of Time. There's also the official at WMR podcast account. And uh, we'll put up what we're planning to do next week. So just be sure to check that out. Yeah. Also, you can check out our past episodes on Weekly Manga Recap at Popping.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, and you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, and be sure to, if you check us out on iTunes, to leave a comment or rating so that you can help us beat the woodworkers. We actually, it was a plea, a call for arms last week, Nick, and the Weekly Manga Recap audience answered. We got new reviews on the U.S. store, so I need, I need to, I need to give, take a moment here to, to shout out to these people the grand doctor 14 or sorry the doctor 14 says formerly the 125th best game and hobby podcast on itunes uh, this podcast is filled with great laughs and even greater analysis uh also from ss3k who says have you ever wanted to learn about random uh and the current manga while being entertained by two dashy men who deserve their own comedy shows there is literally no downsides want laughs we got laughs want rants we got rants want tangents don't want tangents? Too bad. We got tangents. <laughs> also, Apostle Mitch, who says, WR is the rarest of podcasts, all things to all men and perhaps to one special woman. Join Chris and Nick as they discuss the preponderance of boots and fairy tale, the stark absence of backgrounds and bleach, and the existential surrealism of the sparkly eyes and black clover. And also, from Fictional Lover, he says, if you want manga, you should give... Why did I just call it manga? The, like the first manga! Time. Manga! If you want manga... Give it that should... angry Joe <laughs> treatment. If you uh, if you enjoy manga, you should give Weekly Manga Recap a chance. Chris and Nick have great chemistry work well together. They even give manga a fair try, even if it's not in the genre they enjoy. Going so far as to even get guests for another viewpoint. So, thank you very much for all of you. The five-star reviews. I don't know if it's, it's turned the tides quite yet. I think we, we might... I'll check it out. Just, you know, stay calm. Continue, Nick. I'll let you right. know. If you see me screaming in excitement, we may have cracked the list again. Be sure to send your guys criticism, ask we us didn't. questions. <laughs> yes, <Mark. laughs> <laughs> so that's manga for us to read and send that stuff via email to weekly mockery.com. <laughs> we didn't make it. Well, time to kill ourselves. Oh, wait, no! Oh, oh, my God! I skipped over it! Nick, we're 61! Seriously? We're 61 now! We're almost to the top 50 iTunes hobby podcasts! You see, we guys, if you leave awesome comments like those, then that means that we are unstoppable! We need you! We're so close! We're almost there! We're getting ahead of, the, of, of yarn podcasts 
and a, and a Popeye podcast, it looks like. We need you guys to help us get over that, that last bump. Get us up there. Please, leave a five-star review and a review. It helps so much. Oh, boy. Special thanks go out to our Patreon supporters. Your support allows us to create all sorts of bonus content for you guys to enjoy. And special thanks to those guys who help us to put this podcast together in special ways. Steve Mann, our title card artist. You can check out his work in many, many different places. NorakFanboy.dvnorak.com iDrawBoons.tumbo.com Patreon.com slash Steve Mann and many more. And, of course, special thanks to our special British friend, Infamous Planet. We hate him, but we love him. Let me get so, <laughs> uh, that, that is going to do it. Um, in probably a couple of weeks, we will have uh, the second JoJo part to be talking about. So look forward to that, you guys. Yes. And uh, I, I just want to note, Nick, I think the fact that we're 61 proves the fact that it was far more important for me to come here today and do my weekly manga podcast than it was for me to go out there and contribute to the democratic system. All right, let's check on what the uh, what the news is saying. Who is one what? Let's see here. Uh, okay. Oh, Hitler came back from the grave and won st- uh, your state, Chris. Wow. Well. Oh, so it wouldn't even matter if I voted because he would have definitely got my vote anyway. He already got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Good to know. 